procrastination is often not about just laziness and, you know, people who don't care and don't give a darn and, and aren't willing to do something. It's actually a variation of a fear response. Hi, welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. My name is Gabriella Dennery, MD, one of the lead coaches at DocWorking.com. And I am joined by other lead coach, the one and only Jill Farmer. And today we are going to talk about procrastination. That's so, right. It's time to stop putting off this conversation. We need to, to have stop. it now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time like the present. So Jill, in your work with clients, what have you found is the reason for putting things off? Well, that was an interesting thing that I discovered because I had the tendency a little bit to be a procrastinator myself. And my secret, deep, dark, inner critic voice around that was that I was lazy and just not as smart as everybody else because I couldn't get my act together. And when I started playing around with, you know, trying to help other people with procrastination, I decided to sort of dive into the psychology of it and figured out like, why as humans do we procrastinate? And it turns out that procrastination is often not about just laziness and, you know, people who don't care and don't give a darn and, and aren't willing to do something. It's actually a variation of a fear response, right? So when we mm. get agitated and are in that activated fear response, we tend to fight, flee, or freeze. <laughs> and so the procrastination is really a version of that kind of fleeing away from something that feels like a threat to us. And that was so fascinating for me because when I thought about how I tried to motivate myself to do something that was feeling overwhelming, that I was putting off the big project, you know, whether it was in school and it was the big paper I was writing or it was the big project that was due at work, those kinds of things. My way to try to get myself excited about doing this was to beat myself up and talk about how hard it was and how much time I needed in order to do it right. And then I just needed to buckle down with this kind of inner dictator voice. And of course, I would find anything else to do other than that, because I was trying to use an inner voice that was threatening me <laughs> in order to deal with something that I was already perceiving as a threat, that I wasn't sure, you know, it felt hard to me, it felt threatening, so I was subconsciously moving away from it. So that was kind of eye-opening for me to think about it, as that procrastination is not mean that we're evil or lazy. Often it just means that we've got the subconscious perceived threat about it. We're worried about doing it. We're worried about doing it right, right? Perfectionism often gets mixed in there. And so then we avoid it because it feels scary. Yeah. So procrastination is not about time is what I'm hearing you say as well, that it, it really has a lot of other psychological factors associated. Something is too big or too overwhelming or you're bored. That may be another reason for procrastination. So a lot of times it has to do with the overwhelm, especially for doctors, for you know medical students, for people going through all of that craziness of hours of studying and sleeplessness and trying to jam all this information in a very short period of time. Then, of course, then it's like, you know what, I just want to zone out for a minute. And you want to gravitate to something that feels a little better, that in the moment there's some kind of little instant gratification. So, you know, let me look at a cat video on YouTube so that I can, I can feel a little more sane rather than trying to push myself. And then you're right. I think what the point about the inner critic being able to say, look, let me try to beat myself into submission, into procrastination, as opposed to, you know, I'm being lazy or I'm not good enough and all these kind of stories we tell ourselves. And when the focus is on that, then that creates that kind of vicious cycle of more procrastination and more delay and more, I know I have a deadline, but hey, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So what have you found in your coaching experience and in your personal experience, really, that kind of beats that little devil down and able to get that procrastination? I, I don't know if I want to say under control, but to really know how to work with it and move past it. Yeah, I love that. I think just the way you framed it at the end is perfectly there. How do you work with it? How do you move past it? Yeah, we don't even have to beat it down, right? It's a part of us that's trying to protect us from something, right? That feels like a threat. And a couple of things you said, I think, are, are powerful. And one is that sometimes we don't do it because we're bored with it, right? A really helpful way to help get motivated or get some fuel in the engine when we're feeling stalled or putting something off is to remember why it matters to us. You know, when we're bored with something, it's because we've either forgotten or aren't really 
paying attention to why it matters to us. Sometimes it just matters to us because it's a condition of employment and we like our work and we want to continue to be able to do it. Sometimes it's deeper than that. This matters to me because I identify my value system as somebody who shows up and does things and completes them and is reliable. There's a big spectrum of you know matters with a capital M or not, but that can be an effective way when we're feeling stalled or putting something off. The other thing is to recognize that you know sometimes we'll say, oh, I'm just really tired and I want to take a break, but avoidance is often not rest. I am all for taking breaks. <laughs> and I think a lot of times what will help me in procrastination is if I break it down into ridiculously easy steps. And people have heard me talk about that before. Like if we think about my mentor, Martha Beck would call them turtle steps because a turtle can only move in ridiculously easy steps in relation to its body but they cover a whole lot of ground over the course of their lifetime by taking ridiculously easy steps. So for me, when I've got a giant project due that's really important and matters to me for my work, and I'm in re-alphabetizing my recipe cards and I don't even really cook, right? It's like, oh, okay, I'm in procrastination mode. What are some ridiculously easy steps I can take? So easy, I can't not do them to make the tiniest bit of progress and then give myself a meaningful rest doing something that matters to me, that I enjoy doing, that it's an actual rest. Because when we're in avoidance and pretending that we're just taking a break from doing whatever we're procrastinating, we actually have feelings often of guilt and shame and icky stuff that is draining us. And sometimes even makes us more tired than just actually taking some ridiculously easy steps toward getting the thing done. Exactly. And another way, like one of my clients, for example, said that one way that she beats procrastination or, again, works with it, recognizes it and moves past it, which is what you said, you know, you recognize that you're in now in procrastination mode when you're trying to avoid what's in front of you and putting it in a larger context. And why am I doing this? What are my values around it? And what's the bigger picture? What's the vision around it? You know, and that becomes important as well. But one of my comments mentioned that one of the things she does when she knows she's in procrastination mode is to call somebody, connect with somebody, collaborate, brainstorm. It helps get that motivation going again, especially if it's too overwhelming, there's too much to do, how to break it down to simpler steps, or it's kind of boring and stiff, or you're in that judgment place that, you know, it's like I'm judging myself for not getting it done, right? And so to break the pattern by calling somebody, by calling somebody who has a certain expertise. So she was working on a big budget for her non-for-profit and budgeting is not her thing. And so it just kept dragging on and on and on and everybody's waiting for this information, right? And so she started working with people who know something about budgeting for -for not-for-profit and just having a regular weekly call where they would brainstorm, shoot the breeze, check on her progress, et cetera, et cetera. Having that kind of support also helped a lot in getting it done because part of it is, okay, I have to get it done, right? Which is kind of where my procrastination is. If I don't get it done, somebody's going to say something to me or I'm going to feel badly about myself that somehow I'm not good enough or, or not competent enough to take care of it or it's too much, et cetera. Whatever story I tell myself about a situation. But to be able to break out of that, oftentimes as a physician, I mean, I don't know if it's every physician, but and I don't want to generalize. But it's easy to get into that mode of, I have to figure it out myself, which can also you know, perpetuate the cycle of procrastination and, oh, I'm wasting my time, I can't get this done, et cetera, et cetera. So to break that part of the cycle, it's like, let me call somebody, let me reach out to somebody, let me ask for their thoughts and opinion, let me talk to somebody who knows more about this than I do, also can get that motivation going. And it's fun to connect with someone, to have that conversation. So to allow that kind of outside creative input can also get things moving. What do you think about that, Jill, as a uh, strategy? It's perfect. I mean, it, because, it, and it's in it, it breaks an important pattern that you described, right? Which it can be, which we both see in our physician clients. And I know you've mentioned was there as a practicing physician for you as well, which is that kind of superhuman thing. I got to do it all myself. Everything needs to be on my shoulders. I can't dare let anybody else know that somehow I can't do this. Right. And so to, to invite people into that, somebody who's a friend, a trusted thinking partner, a coach to say, Hey, can we brainstorm this together? Can we use our collective brain skills here to map a plan out? And I would say map a plan out of ridiculously easy steps. And in our course that you and I are creating stat quick wins, which is all about how to to make life better for physicians. 
I teach a tool in there and I often encourage people, if you're using this tool, if you're procrastinating and it's a tool that helps people break things down into ridiculously easy steps and make an actionable, it's a really good thing to do with a partner because just having somebody else there to throw out ideas. I do it a lot of times when I'm doing group work and I'll have people in the workshop say, okay, what's the thing that you're putting off that's making you feel miserable and gives you a pit in your stomach? And we workshop it out in using that tool that I talk about in the course. We break it down and then we use the table that we're sitting at at the workshop to use each other's brains and say, well, I feel really stuck about this. And people will throw out great ideas <laughs> when, when they're not the ones doing the work and they're not stuck in the muck of feeling overwhelmed by it. Other people often have really good, fresh ideas for moving through that. And so I think you bring up just a brilliant point about using that as an asset and as a tool for procrastination. Absolutely. And I think the whole idea that I can't come up with all the ideas myself, somebody else can have a, a fresh perspective is very, very important. So I think, you know, to recap, you know, procrastination is a thing. It's not necessarily about time and it's certainly not about laziness or a judgment or self-judgment or the inner critic saying, hey, you know, you're not doing enough. You're not being enough. It really is about a fight, flight, freeze response and how to learn to work with it, recognize it, work with it and work through it through different techniques and tactics that your tool for time management and really had to deal with procrastination breaking it down to ridiculously simple steps, as you say, Jill, which is perfect. And yes, doctors, simple is doable. <laughs> and find trusted partners to start working with you and to brainstorm different ideas, find a fresh perspective. And so I think that that may wrap this up, but did you want to add anything else to, you know, procrastination and how to conquer that procrastination mountain, if you will? Um, I think the only thing I just want to add is just to what you, something you said beautifully is like, there is a little tendency sometimes as physicians to think if it's not hard, it doesn't count. <laughs> and so then we tend to try to make stuff harder because there's such a great record of being superhuman and traversing really high mountains. And a lot of stuff we're procrastinating doesn't have to be a giant mountain to conquer. It can be a path around the mountain. <laughs> so letting things be easier and by maybe delegating some of the aspects of it by saying, okay, 80% is good enough in this situation. I think those can be really good ways to sort of use a, a multifaceted approach to procrastination as well. I love talking about this with you. So absolutely, it's, good conversation. it's been a great conversation. We want to remind you that if you do want coaching support right now, all you have to do is go to docworking.com and you can check out our coaching opportunities for you to get a certified coach who is experienced in working with physicians. Also, if you're not on our newsletter yet, you got to get over to docworking.com today and sign up. That's how you find out about all kinds of offers and resources that we have available to you. So thank you for listening to Doc Working and our conversation around working around and through procrastination. And thank you for being with us for Doc Working, the whole physician podcast. And we look forward to seeing you again. <laughs>